Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report, where I share my 44 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Well, we're continuing to see the channel grow, folks. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got over, I think, 5,500 new subscribers, and they're still coming on. So looking for that 50,000 and 100,000 mark. So help me get there. Just do one favor, because this is going to help a lot, is hit the like button. We're getting thousands and thousands of views, but uh, the likes are not matching. Please give me that like. It's free. So in tonight's video, as I announced yesterday, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. There's going to be a theme as we go through the week. This is Macro Monday. We're going to go through a lot of elements of what I think is going on with the Fed and some other things I want to talk about. Tomorrow, I'm just setting you up. We are going to be going through stocks. I'm going to continue on the AI and chip scenario because I think those are very unique. I'm looking for some ideas. I'm going to do an ETF hack. So let's get in to tonight's video. Okay, folks, we got a lot to talk about. I'm not sure what the length of these videos are going to be. My goal is to get them down quite a bit on a daily basis. And uh, just remember also, every Friday right now is programmed to be a live trading session that we're going to do probably the last two hours of trading. So that'd be two o'clock Eastern time to the close. We'll probably do two hours at that time. It just needs more time to set things up. And I think it's a really good time to do that because what we're going to get is a lot of squaring up of books. There's a lot of activity on Friday. So I think this works out really well. We'll see, we'll adjust if necessary. So let's uh, talk about a couple things. As I mentioned, this is going to be more of a macro talk. You folks have been watching this channel for a while. Know that I have been the number one guy telling you they're not going to lower rates. None of this stuff that everybody's talking about that was going to happen this year. And we're going to see, remember, it was seven drops in rates. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I do see something very interesting, and I have, uh, I've got a couple uh, projects that I'm working on that are exposing me to some segments of the economy that is uh, starting to get very interesting. And so let's talk about what I believe we're, what, eight days or a week from now, a week from tomorrow we get the beginning of the FOMC me meeting. And I mentioned this briefly in last night's video, but what I'm looking at here is I think something somewhat unique, mainly because it's an election year, but the Fed's going to have to move early if they're going to do something. And I think we're getting to see uh, the potential for some changes. I've been talking about the 10-year. I'll, co I'll cover that here in a few minutes. But the 10-year securities, uh, treasuries look like they'll, they're will they going to drop below 4%, maybe get down to 375, a sub-4 number. So that, that's interesting in itself. But this is going to set up a, a lot of things. So let's talk just a little bit more about the, the Fed and why I think they're finally getting really close to making a move. And I, the big event that I continue to suggest we need to watch for is the change in any QT. And I think that is going to be significant. Uh, in last night's uh, uh, Substack, I talked about this in, in a fairly high uh, level. I've really dug into this concept that I'm talking about right now a little bit more. I'll probably continue that theme in the interest rate section. So if you haven't got the newsletter, you can get it. It is at uh, kendallreport.com slash newsletter, or you can go to kendallreport.substack.com. So either way, $8 for premium. There's free content every night covering my opinion and what's going on on a daily basis. And remember, that's where I'm doing all the micro analysis now. So as far as the as the Fed goes, I think Powell did actually expose a few things. It's almost 
like he's trying to head off. If you listen to some of the content that he talked about, he was talking about, oh, we're not sure that inflation is under control yet. We don't want to move too early. It's almost like he's putting up a, a smoke screen that we don't want to move too early is we want to move early. <laughs> you know, we've seen this before where a lot of elements that we are uh, constantly seeing is actually they're telling you the what they're going to do, but they say they're not going to do it. And I think it's finally the time where we're going to see this, I guess, this scenario start to unfold. And I think the meeting next week is going to be pretty interesting. We may actually do a live stream on Wednesday during the meeting. I'll, I'll let you know as we go through the week. Uh, basically, the patterns that I'm going to be doing on the channel now is going to be quite a bit different. So I have to bring up something. Those of you know, I always joke around about Peter Schiff, and it's kind of a funny meme, I think, around the channel and, and people commenting about that. But I, I happen to catch something that's going to tie together with what I'm thinking. He's on this tour telling everybody that there is going to be a crash greater than 1929. Uh, we're all going to die, and there's not going to be any money on the planet anymore. I'm exaggerating, of course. But this is the kind of scenario that's throwing out there. Meanwhile, he still has funds trading. He's still acting as if nothing happened. And my argument for the people that seem to promote this kind of stuff is that it's kind of uh, disingenuous because what they're not they're not watching if you watch their actions they're still doing the same thing they're doing as if everything's going to be okay he's not shutting down his funds he didn't build a bunker maybe he did uh, but he's not saying well i'm going to move into my bunker three weeks from now all those kind of things uh, i've always been somewhat of a optimist to a large degree I always seem to find the good in things that I'm, I'm watching, and I don't see that scenario. And my pushback on that, and I was talking to an associate today, how fun would it be to get Peter to come on and we could debate some of these things? That would be really fun. I'll, maybe that'll happen. Who knows? Uh, we have some common friends, and I did meet him several years ago, although it did not go well. But the... The scenario that I, that it appears that a lot of folks aren't paying attention to is what's really happening in the world of economics and what's happening with AI and with all the, the chips. The reason why all these things are blowing up, and I'll go into that in detail tomorrow when we get into the ETF hack, is this is a, a big part of my outlook it's pretty much the opposite than even Ray Dalio is talking about the 100-year debt cycle. It's debt, 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 as everybody's focused on. And I get that. I mean, when you get, you know, pushing toward $35 trillion in debt, that's a, a big deal. Um, there's a, I'm not sure how far I'll go on this. There's a lot of things coming up as I'm talking to you. Um, but the my scenario is that that's... There's an if or a, a however, how you want to look at this, is as long as we can somehow get the fiscal spending under control. I don't think it happens under the current administration. We're going to, going to need a new administration to maybe execute some restraint. And I'm going to make a point here. And I did, I believe I did discuss this in my annual report I keep going back to, but this was the theme for this year for me, is that all we need, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen based on this last budget that they just threw out the other day, is they're still pushing this 10% increase in fiscal spending. As long as that happens, that's going to hamper things a little bit. But if you just cut it back by 1% or 2%, you won't believe the effect it's going to have on the net growth and how it's going to affect the debt ratios only if I, my premise is right and we start to see productivity really expand. And I think this is highly likely. We've seen some increases, but my scenario is that we won't see the big increases 
until 2025, 26, and 27. I don't want to sound like Kathy Woods here, three, I'm going to go a three-year investment outlook, but it does appear that there are some things that are starting to come into play, and they're likely to be more prominent as, as we go forward. And so from that standpoint, I think what we're going to see is that acceleration productivity and my whole scenario, I'll get out of this loop in a minute, the whole scenario is that we're going to grow faster than they're going to spend. Okay, so if I did some calculations, uh, there's a video I did, I think it was part two of my productivity boost that's on the channel right now. I need to pull some charts out of there next time we talk about this. Maybe even tomorrow it will be appropriate. I'll try to bring that into tomorrow's broadcast. But really what we're looking at here is that the once it, you get a little bit of restraint on, on expenditures, then you get a, a rocket ship growing. You get the GDP to start to grow at numbers that is only a dream, maybe going to China back in the 10, 15 years ago when they were pushing eight and 10 plus percent growth rates. I actually think that's very possible here. And I know it sounds somewhat maybe over optimistic, and uh, but uh, we live in a world that's over pessimistic. And not only that, the doom porn of Zero Hedge and those folks get a lot of, lot of views talking about the negative part of this market. But now let's, I'm, I'm going to wrap through this, and then I'll tell you what we're going to go through next. But basically what we're seeing here is we're seeing last year was a huge year in the markets. We've got another back-to-back -back so far where we're pushing 8-plus percent, around 8 percent on the NASDAQ and the S&P. And we're still seeing the markets from an equity viewpoint growing. The economy is is doing okay. It's just kind of at that two plus percent level. But once this stuff that I'm talking about starts to kick in, you're going to see amazing gains. And I go to my longer term forecasts. I believe I did this. I keep referencing this newsletter I did. So if you don't have to pay to get that. It's on free content. So if you just sign up for a free subscription to the Substack newsletter, you can go back, I believe it was December 29th, and, and read this. But this is a big theme, and this has been me uh, forever, folks. I've been writing these type of things. It was nice to, since I've started the Substack, to get back to writing and really putting these ideas down. It helps you formulate and think through things at a next level, for me anyway. And I, I go back to this uh, scenario that we're going to see these massive increases. And I don't think anyone's considering what's going to happen if GDP goes through the roof. And of course, if you watch Biden's message the other night, uh, the corporations are now going to pay their fair share, right? Good luck. But regardless, it's not about the tax revenues, by the way. It is really, really this growth is going to be huge. And all they have to do is they can maintain what they have, cut back spending, get productivity to grow, and you'll see um, amazing, amazing changes in the economy. Okay, so let, let's talk about um, what I'm going to go through the rest. We're going to go to the charts here in just a minute, but we're going to stick kind of on an interest rate scenario. And I think it's so crazy. Uh, let's see how far am I in. Uh, only 13 minutes. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll go through the interest rates. We'll touch on some ideas and things. That, uh, I thought the stock market traded very interesting that today. So I'll do a brief coverage of probably S&P, NASDAQ, and then we'll go in and we'll look at the interest rates. And we got to cover Bitcoin because this thing's out of control. It just keeps going through to the moon, right? So that's what we'll do next. Uh, just to summarize, I, I'm just looking at some of my notes. I've been kind of running wild here. Uh, let's talk about two things before we leave on the macro as we look forward on this week. And we'll close out here on this first section. Is the uh, We've got retail sales com coming out. Uh, we've got CPI, PPI coming out this week. 
I just want to put out there that I don't think CPI and PPI are going to be any big surprises. And I think very soon, while they've been on page one, they're going to move to page 15 or 20. They're going to go a little bit back in the background as we, we go forward here, and they're not going to be focused on people are going to go, okay, they're at two and a half, they're two seven, two two, whatever the number, and that's going to come off the list of concerns. And I think as that happens, we start to see some other changes that are going on here. So um, I'm trying to get out of this loop, but there's some things. This is the point of Monday's video now, is one of the other things that I think is likely to happen, I've been studying this fairly close, all of the stuff that we were told last year that the real estate market was going going to collapse and the higher interest rates were going to kill the real estate, we've definitely seen some slowing down. But I'll tell you something. I talked to a realtor just a few days ago in, uh, in, in an area that, uh, that basically has been hot and then it's cooled down, and they were saying they— just with this little drop in rates that we've seen recently, this, you know, maybe almost 20 bips or so, that has been enough to absolutely ignite all kinds of activity. I was talking to somebody um, at a mortgage company and a real estate company. I'm kind of doing, I've got some friends that are in that business. So I'm just trying to get a feel. The mortgage people told me they're like gearing up. They're starting to hire people again. I, I saw a tweet earlier today that somebody was talking about some person at the bank and how bad everything was. And I, I think it's not very realistic. I think it is somewhat slow. And, you know, being the optimist that I told you that I am, I'm seeing a bit different. I'm not just being a contrarian here. I'm seeing some activity that is really starting to look very interesting. So uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll go in, we'll cover the equities, we'll do S&P real quick. Just want to talk about today's action, probably bring up an hourly chart. I don't have the output from the database yet for today. It runs and it starts running here in just a couple minutes, but it won't be completed for a while. But that will be in the Substack newsletter. That is premium content that I go through every night. But like I said, go there, sign up, and do all that. Uh, let's get into the equities here. All right, so what we're looking at now is the daily chart on the S&P. I'm going to go to an hourly. I brought up the March 24 contract. Uh, if you go to ES1 on TradingView right now, what you're going to get is, I think the June contract's already rolled over, and so you're going to get that June rollover and I don't want to see that premium in here right now. I think it was kind of interesting. I, I, I believe the bears were probably a little disappointed because it looked like they're going to break this down. We traded down uh, below this uh, 5,100 level, and it just rebounded. We traded down to uh, 94 and 5094. As I showed you the other day, those of you that have the indicators, uh, the five minute chart was just screaming by me down there. And there was about a 25 handle run off of that level. And uh, the hourly chart was also kind of giving you some, it was nudging you like, hey, you should be buying this. I was watching them trade. I'm like, you got to buy something under 5,100. This is going to come back. And it did. It came back pretty big all the way up back into the 20 handle. So look at the algos here. We're seeing a, a decline. I mentioned this in last night's Substack, and I'll just cover this real quick, is it looks like we've got a shot at possibly moving down just a little bit down toward the this uh, 5079 level, a little bit lower than we went 
yesterday, but everything seems to be losing momentum. We're starting to, to kind of roll, and I talked to you folks about this in both in the Substack as well as on YouTube, is that really what we're looking at here is that the market momentum that is is starting to fade is getting more substantial, but it doesn't look like there's a major decline. But I covered a, a lot of this stuff in my little brief video I did last night. So make sure uh, you watch that. I'll, I won't go into a lot of detail here, but we are seeing some things here that are, I think, very interesting from the, the standpoint that we're seeing this softness. And maybe uh, I'm going to go through the interest rates here in just a minute, but maybe those are also elements that will try to tell a story so we can start to connect some of the dots. And those of you who've been watching the channel for a long time, you know I like to try to cluster events, having multiple markets kind of leading us into a direction. It does look like sideways uh, broadening trading range. I don't think we get a collapse. Everybody's probably telling me, I haven't looked at the timeline, but on YouTube channel, everybody's telling me that markets, a crash is coming, the whole thing. Uh, I don't see those metrics, and we're certainly not seeing them. I covered the weekly market uh, from the standpoint of the WaveTech database, and we're still getting new stocks coming on on an intermediate basis. Now, it's a little frothy at 86% bullish, but it's still those forward-looking elements really are dominant. We saw this, you folks have been around last year. It didn't seem likely in 23 that we were going to have the year we have, but this was obvious in January from the database viewpoint that we were going to see a substantial sideways or sideways upward movements from the standpoint of what was being told. And then we recycled in October and we basically have been vertical since the October lows. So let's uh, come back over here. And so th this is what's what's happening here. Let's go over the hourly chart just to set you folks up just so we can see some of this. But this is what I was, I was telling you about in this morning on this update here. We start we started to see right in here at now this is six o'clock pacific time now because that's i'm now i didn't even have to move i used to live in denver two days ago now i live in los angeles and didn't move from the clock standpoint and so what we're looking at is a nice reversal right off the opening but the algos were all starting to turn up. Everything was crossing over. And if you saw the forecast, this is what I showed you on Friday's live video. The forecast was telling us um, a, a lot of things were likely to unfold here. And I, I think I can, if I can get us back there. But this is, uh, if you would have saw right in here, this is right, uh, right after the, the open this morning as we came into that low. This forecast of this spike was was all over the place. If you would have been watching this, you would have seen that the algos were forecasting a move off the low. Um, um, no, it was huge, and it was a great play if you were on top of that. So hopefully some of you folks got that. And just to mention, you you folks know this channel is self-supporting. So if you want to check out the indicators, kendallreport.com slash indicator indicate her tours and that will get you to at least a page that would tell you more and there's a deep discount available right now but this whole scenario this is five minute chart that thing was just staring at you this morning if you're looking for intraday trades so let's go over and let's do a nasdaq here real quick All right, so this is the daily. I don't. The algos aren't working on here, so I'm gonna. I have to adjust a lot of settings because of the, the way that these things work. But the, you can see, and I talked about this a bit, in the Substack. We're still seeing, a relative weakness. I'm just trying to blow up these bars so they're easier to see. But you can see we got the big reversal on Friday. 
and then some follow through. So we did see some follow through. I did notice uh, earlier that right after the market closed on E-minis anyway, we actually printed to positive territory. I, I, I didn't look at them when we were up there. Uh, So this is um, yeah. So let's go over and let's just go to let's go to the with the rollover just because I want to see the the algos. So similar type situation here, where you got the reversal, a lower low. Now we're seeing a little bit of a bid come back in, but the the number that we're looking at here, it, everything's uh, not as rolling over as as they should. Uh, but it is showing that there is a bit of a rollover coming, and, but it's nothing drastic. And this is what I'm trying to point out here, is that this thing is just trading right into this sideways uh, uh, moving averages. Everything's flattening out. And if we go over to a weekly chart, then it becomes more obvious. And I talked about this before it happened. And I guess when you when you're talking about your own indicators and own concepts. This is what I was talking about. The top end of the market grid flattened out. The bottom end expanded down. The key number to watch here as we go through this week, 17,008, let's call it 835. That's going to be the key level to watch. There's going to be major support. That's your buy the dip number, by the way. That is the thing that looks like um, is going to happen. And uh, yeah, I see um, somebody commenting it's going to go sideways for the rest of the year. It's March, folks. That's not going to happen. We're even going to go down or up, and I, I think we're still going to see some upward bias. You can see, especially if we go out on some of these charts and go out to the monthly, um, there's not enough data here. Uh, but if you go out to the, the uh, monthly, you still see pretty good upslopes. I would go and watch the long-term analysis that I did. Uh, back at the beginning of each month, just two weeks ago, you should be able to go back and go through the quarterly, monthly, and get a bigger picture. And there's still going to be, like I said, an upward bias on all these markets going into and around the, you know, probably into uh, at least June, July, and possibly all the way into October if we get a rotation. So I'll be covering this stuff as as we update everything from the standpoint of how these metrics start to unfold as we go uh, go forward. All right, so We've got to go through this, folks. Bitcoin, I know some folks don't like Bitcoin. It's kind of hard to ignore right now. I mean, look at this parabolic move. There's a, a couple of things I want to show you here because I was looking at this earlier and going back. I know when I did my longer term update, here's, here's the real moonshot, right? This is the monthly chart and it's just vertical. We got a monthly RTX sell signal meant nothing. But we had three Fibonacci targets, and I talked about this the other day. These Fibonacci targets were generated a year ago in March of 23. And it seemed, I always mention them because I tell you, as crazy as it seems that this didn't seem very realistic, if we were sitting back here looking at this chart and the market is trading, let me just get a number here. It's trading at uh, 28,000. And I'm telling you, it's going to 72,000. You're like, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, well, here we are. This is what the metrics told us. We also had the augos. Everything were positive. Uh, you would, uh, how's the best way to put it? <laughs> you would have seen all of this coming into play. It's very evident if we come back here, like I said, the the algos, we had, we had this brief period where it looked like the algos were going to go negative. And what happened was we went sideways. And there's an old saying, when a market doesn't go down, when it should go down, it's very bullish. And of course, the next scenario out of here was a 
huge blow up uh, on the upside, right? So on a, on a weekly basis, we had three FIB targets. 71,850 was target two. Let me go back. Target one was 62, 626, 718, and then 77,500. And all of those seem somewhat unreachable, but here we are. Uh, we're trading right now. We're up. Uh, it was up a bit better. We were up, I think, over 5% just a little bit ago, but we are definitely uh, printing this thing straight up. And I don't claim to be any kind of crypto or Bitcoin type expert. But what I what I will tell you, I've been really good over the years in following this and getting getting the, the numbers uh, right as far as the trend and all that. I remember who was that? Um, I forget his name is like Peter Zeon or something like that. He was on Joe Rogan at 16,000 telling everybody this thing's worthless is going to zero. And I've, I've argued, uh, I think he's pretty good on demographics, but when it comes to markets, he should stick to demographics. He's not very good. And I, I think that's uh, the difference in somebody like me who spent their whole life in, on trading floors and hedge funds and managing money at, uh, with lots of uh, working in, in uh, banks and doing all kinds of consulting. Uh, maybe we're a little better connected than a guy that's watching uh, some kind of metrics around population. So I, I think what we're seeing here in Bitcoin is really... Uh, let's just come up. Um, actually, we're about 31 minutes in, so I, I am actually, uh, I am down with uh, completing this video tonight at 30 minutes. I'd love to see this get done most of the nights. Probably tomorrow will be a full hour just setting you up because we're going to be going through some ETF hacks. We're going to be digging into a whole bunch of stuff tomorrow, and I'm going to show you how to use some of our our tools as well. I know many of your subscribers as well to WaveTech. So it'll be it'll be a good session tomorrow. I'm trying to get it. There's so much that I could go for five hours, so I won't. But we'll probably stick to about an hour. We'll try to uh, do building blocks uh, as far as getting understanding of what's likely to go on. We'll definitely have a set of stocks that we'll go through. And hopefully if there's anything around, what I want to also start doing on this channel is doing some trade setups. And I think going into the stocks on Tuesday is going to be really good. So if you have friends, make sure you tell them to hang out with us tomorrow at 7 o'clock New York time or watch the replay, whatever works for them. But uh, I think uh, to kind of summarize what we did tonight is I, I see some... Uh, really optimistic times ahead. I don't see the crash. I don't see, uh, I told you before, never try to invest looking in a rear view mirror like somebody talking about 1929. Uh, to mention my buddy Peter, his big deal was, well, well there wasn't an inflation in 1929. It was deflation, and that was actually good. No, it wasn't. It was terrible. Uh, the deflationary pressures destroyed so much. It was terrible. I don't even know, but it. you have to realize that all of us, whether it's me, Peter, you name it, we all have an agenda. We have our viewpoint of what's going on. But as always on this channel, I'm always driven by data and metrics that I've used for a lot of years to, to project some of these big events. And I know there's people watching here, my, some of my institutional folks that knew me in 08, I call that thing really, really good, like perfect, I'm not bragging, it just happened. And I did some really good guidance for folks that had a lot of other people's money at risk. And I can tell you folks, it's one thing for you to manage your money when you start taking on other people's money, it's the next level. It's really serious. And that's why a lot of investment advisors take the easy way out and they just do passive investing. They just put it in a pie chart and cross their fingers, stick their head in the sand, and look out once in a while. This is very proactive uh, things I'm gonna start teaching you on this channel. So make sure you show up tomorrow. 
It's uh, Tuesday is going to be, I'm not sure what we call it, Macro Monday we just did. Tuesday is going to be really focused on stocks and portfolio management. Wednesday, we're going to go through, see where we are in the week and talk about the end of the week because we're going to have on Wednesday, we'll have the um, CPI out anyway. I think P yeah, PPI comes out on Thursday. There will not, just to keep you guys in sync, there will not be a video on Thursday. I'm taking one day off during the week because I, I have several projects that you folks are going to be excited that I'm working on that I need to have that clear-headed space. I don't need to have every afternoon. It takes more than a few minutes to get ready for these broadcasts. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hit that like button before you leave and make sure we get a thousand likes, if you will. So thanks again, all the new subscribers. Like I said, there's like 5,500 of them. We're pushing 40,000, which is is really exciting. I'm just taking a quick glance here. Yeah, 39,293. So tell your friends, let's push this thing over 40,000 and head for the, the big number 50. I want my little silver plaque. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching as always we'll see you tomorrow uh, prepare yourself probably be at least an hour tomorrow so just because of the content and what we're doing thanks for watching folks we'll talk to you tomorrow